and gentlemen, I am the one and only D. J. Storms, and in just days, live on the WWE Network, a real-life superhero will put his North American Championship prize on the line against the Rebel Heart. Also, the Queen of Spades will collide with the EST, and at the end of that match, we will decide whether we will be shouting out undefeated or overrated. And finally, the sadistic Blackheart will put Goldie up for grabs against the ominous man from Amsterdam looking to claim back what he feels was stolen from him. But before it is time for the superhero and the rebel heart to collide. Before it's time for that sadistic man from Amsterdam and the black heart to fight for Goldie. Before it is time for NXT TakeOver Phoenix. It's time for the rundown. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video right here on YouTube.com, as of course, you already know who I am, Mr. Controversy, and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. This is the official rundown for NXT TakeOver Phoenix, which is streaming live on the WWE Network this Saturday, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, we got five matches set. Once again, another star-studded takeover event that could produce multiple Match of the Year candidates. But without further ado, I just need to take a little sip of water right there. Why don't we dive straight into the matches now, shall we? First things first, we got the Undisputed Era versus the War Raiders for the NXT Tag Team Titles. This has been brewing for months now. The War Raiders have been pursuing the NXT Tag Team titles since the summer. I think that this should be their time. This should be their time. Uh, we had a Tag Team title match on NXT not that long ago with the War Raiders in the Undisputed Era, where Bobby Fish actually returned. Uh, then we had the War Games match, which was very, very good. Leads us to today. I think that these two teams are going to put on a match just as good, if not better, than the match that they put on at Full Sail. Takeover matches are always multiple notches up from Full Sail matches. Unless, of course, it's Pete Dunne and Ricochet. Um, we all know that NXT's tag team division is absolutely fantastic. They're just doing everything right as far as the tag team division goes. The Undisputed Era, what can I say about the Undisputed Era? They're the hottest thing in the WWE in NXT right now, outside of Tommaso Ciampa and Becky Lynch, of course. Uh, they were probably the best thing going in WWE in 2018, all throughout the year. They just kept it up consistently throughout 2018. Um, the War Raiders, of course we all know the War Raiders are fantastic in their own right. I think this is going to be a very good tag team match. I'm not sure if they're going to have this match kick off the show. It would make sense for them to have the match kick off the show, considering that NXT has been very consistent as far as kicking off the show with the tag team titles. It, it seems to be Triple H's specialty to kick off the show with the tag team titles. As far as the winners go, I think uh, this is the time to put the stamp on the War Raiders. And the War Raiders are going to get that W. The W is going to go in the win column for Hanson and Rowe. And we are going to be singing the praises of new NXT Tag Team Champions. Now, Hanson and Rowe as Tag Team Champions. You know, I said that Adam Cole is going to be NXT Champion at some point. I said he's going to be NXT Champion at some point, And it is going to happen. Hopefully, I believe it should happen at the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Question is, how long... Between that time and now, you know, with that time length, what's the rest of the Undisputed Era going to be doing? 
He said that all the members of the Undisputed Era will be dripping in championship gold. So if Adam Cole is going for the NXT championship, then that leaves one of the members of the Undisputed Era to go for the North American championship. So I would probably pick Roderick Strong to do that. Then that means that Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly are back to teaming together. That means that we could very well be looking at North American champion, Roderick Strong, tag team champions, O'Reilly and Fish, and NXT champion, Adam Cole. But to do that, to do that, the Undisputed Era first has to lose the tag team titles. I think that Hanson and Rowe are losing the title, or not, not losing the titles, are winning the titles, and the Undisputed Era are going to win the titles back at some point this year, and we could very well be singing the praises of Undisputed Era as the very first ever three-time NXT Tag Team Champions in the near future. When would that be? I don't know. But you're going to have to give Hanson and Rowe a legitimate run with the championships first. I believe that if the Undisputed Era is to win the NXT Tag Team titles for a third time, then it would probably be at the TakeOver in June, whenever that TakeOver is, because we all know that Money in the Bank is pretty much a part of the Big Five. So... That is going to be the takeover where the Undisputed Era should get the third NXT Tag Team title reign and make history. As for Hanson and Rowe, well, they're going to have a couple title defenses here and there against guys like Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. Street Profits have, got, have uh, been making a case, maybe Forgotten Sons. You never know. But as far as the match at takeover goes, I'm going with Hanson and Rowe, the War Raiders' new Tag Team Champions. Let's talk about Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono. Hopefully, this time, WWE's finally going to give them the proper amount of time that these guys need. The first match was a squash match back at War Games. The second match was a six-minute match. Nothing but a build-up to Cassius Ono beating down Matt Riddle after Matt Riddle tried to get Ono to do a fist bump. But regardless, I, I know what these two are capable of. Matt Riddle, I have not seen Matt Riddle in a match that lasted over six minutes. I want to see Matt Riddle go. I want to see Matt Riddle in... 15, 20-minute matches. I want to see Matt Riddle go out there and legitimately tear the house down with someone in an undercard match. I mean, Johnny Gargano and Andrade Cien Almas had that undercard match at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. They tore the house down. Why can't that be, why can't that be Matt Riddle and Cassius Sono? I think it's going to be Cassius Sono and Matt Riddle this time. This match could very well kick off the show as well. It's, it's either the tag team title match or this match. This is going to be the final installation. This is going to be the nail in the coffin for this feud. And there really is no other no other choice to make except for Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle, obviously, uh, young and up and coming. Matt Riddle needs to win this. This is his first major feud. And then I think he probably moves on to another feud before they actually insert him into a championship picture. So listen to this. Johnny Gargano and Ricochet, you know, they're tied up with Aleister Black and Tommaso Ciampa. The main event and mid-card scene is really mixed. So the undercard below the North American Championship picture has got a lot to work with. Matt Riddle defeats Cash DeSono. Matt Riddle, I'm going with Matt Riddle as my pick. Velveteen Dream's returning. Velveteen Dream is not going up to the main roster just yet. What if, at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 5, what if we see, as an undercard match, for Matt Riddle's second major feud, what if we see Matt Riddle versus the Velveteen Dream? I don't know about you guys, but given 15-20 minutes, I would say that is a match of the year candidate. Matt Riddle... And Velveteen Dream. Think about it. I think I think I could have possibly put that idea out into the air. You never know. You never know. But as far as the match at TakeOver goes, I think we're going to get a great hard-hitting match. And Matt Riddle is going to finally put this feud to rest. Matt Riddle to defeat Cash Asono. <clears throat> Let's talk about Johnny Gargano and Ricochet. Now, this right here, this is a match that has a very high unpredictability factor because there's a lot of combustible elements to go into this match. You got Johnny Gargano and the fact that everyone 
has been calling Johnny Gargano to be the one to take the title off of Ciampa, but are you really going to have Gargano lose this match and then go off and challenge for the NXT Championship after he just lost the match for the North American Championship? You're going to have him go challenge Ciampa at TakeOver Brooklyn 5 WrestleMania weekend? It would kind of feel like WWE is being a little bit being a little bit biased towards Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano really isn't at that pure babyface level yet. Supposedly, Gargano and Ciampa have already reunited. They've already reunited. So, this needs to continue all the way to SummerSlam weekend. This needs to continue all the way to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Uh, TakeOver Brooklyn. TakeOver Toronto. Because SummerSlam is going to be in Toronto this year. We're going to have NXT TakeOver Toronto 2. <clears throat> this would mean that these guys are going to go back to the same place in which they won the NXT Tag Team titles. Instead of partners, they are opponents. This time, this time Gargano has finally broken away from Champa. <coughs> Excuse me. No more heel DIY. Heel DIY should break up around June, I would say. Around that time. Then we have Gargano finally getting back to his old babyface tactics. Gargano finally goes off, he finally defeats Champa, finally becomes NXT champion, or they could have Gargano win the North American Championship, and we they could do a title for title match between Gargano and Champa at TakeOver Toronto, but I don't really think they're going to do that, and they're going to give Gargano this huge crowning achievement. You don't want to plunge your Gargano down our throats. You don't want to make Gargano NXT's Roman Reigns. You don't. Then you just have Ricochet go over clean. Does Ricochet go over clean? And do we see Gargano just move on? Is that is this just going to be a one and done? Does Champa interfere? It's it is a lot of combustible elements to go into this. It, it is a very, very, very tough, tough match to call. And you know, for me, being you know the best fucking wrestling analyst in this fucking community. It is even hard for me. NXT always has a high unpredictability factor because all of these types of matches, either man can win and either man could walk out looking like a million bucks. Both men walk out looking like a million bucks, but they always have multiple plans that they could go. Because NXT is a very creative brand. Triple H is a very creative human being. So he could go multiple ways with the storyline, whether Gargano wins or whether Ricochet wins. If Gargano doesn't take the title off of Ricochet, then who else is there? You're going to have Matt Riddle, Keith Lee. Velveteen Dream is most likely going up to the main roster after WrestleMania. So Velveteen Dream's out. Matt Riddle and Keith Lee. That is pretty much all you have right now. Unless you have Velveteen Dream versus Ricochet for the North American title at TakeOver Brooklyn. Which I doubt they're going to do. But if not Gargano, then I can see Matt Riddle being the one to take the title off of Ricochet. I mean, I don't, I don't really see any other option. I mean, like, it could be Matt Riddle. If you're going to have uh, the Undisputed RB dripping in championship gold, maybe you're going to have Roderick Strong be the one to take the title off of Ricochet. Again, you don't really know. But if I have to pick a winner, I guess I'm going to have to go with Ricochet. I think that Triple H is going to have DIY reform and Gargano's going to be used by Champa to keep the title for the next several months past TakeOver Brooklyn, past TakeOver Takeover whatever whatever TakeOver is, Money in the Bank weekend in June. And then they're gonna finally have that match. They're finally gonna have that match at TakeOver Toronto SummerSlam weekend. Because I, I, don't, I don't know how believable it would be if Gargano loses this match and he, right now he's reformed with Champa. You know, we're probably going to see that tomorrow, or not, not tomorrow, tonight. We're probably, it's probably going to be on right now as this video is going on, but we're probably going to see Gargano and Champa reform right now, tonight. But then you're just going to break them up a few weeks later, ultimately to put him in an NXT Championship match at TakeOver Brooklyn 5. And that's going to be Gargano's moment. It's a tough call. 
it really is a tough it really is a tough call. But um, I'm gonna have to go with Ricochet to retain the North American Championship, and we'll see how the rest plays out. That's all. That's all I really want to do. I just want to sit back and see how the rest plays out. I don't even want to bother trying to fantasy book it anymore. Let's talk about Bianca Belair and Shayna Baszler. Don't underestimate this match, Bianca Belair. Um, she's very good at what she does. She may be a little overrated. Trust me, I know. But, but. She's still very good at what she does. Shayna Baszler, she's great at what she does too. Shayna Baszler is probably the best women's wrestler in the WWE right now, just based off of what she's done in the past. She's put on some great matches. She has a great character. She's been she's been at the top of her game all year. She's been at the top of her game all year. All year. Shayna Baszler has been better than almost every single main roster wrestler outside of Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Asuka, and Charlotte. Outside of those four, Shayna Baszler has been better than everyone on the main roster. Everyone. And that's why I, I think that Shayna Baszler is going to retain the NXT Women's Championship. I, I just don't see Bianca Belair winning this. I'm not going to be mad if Bianca Belair wins. I want to see Bianca Belair as champion, but I don't understand how they could give the title to Bianca Belair at this rate against Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, I feel as though Shayna Baszler's not getting called up until after WrestleMania as well. Velveteen Dream and Shayna Baszler are the next two call-ups. They are the next two call-ups. No, 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 three call-ups. Velveteen Dream, Shayna Baszler, and Aleister Black. Those are the next three call-ups from NXT. The question is when. I think it's going to be after WrestleMania. For all we know, we could very well see Aleister Black and Velveteen Dream in the Royal Rumble. You never know. But, as far as the women's match goes, I think it should be very competitive. I think we should see something out of Bianca Belair that we are not used to seeing. We should see a certain intensity. Obviously, Shayna Baszler is going to bring her, her intensity. It's going to be a big fight feel for the women's division. I have a feeling it should be a very good match, and I have a feeling Shayna Baszler is going to retain. I think that undefeated streak for Bianca Belair is done. As far as who's going to take that title off of Baszler, I don't know. For all we know, it could very well end up being Bianca, but I just don't see it happening. The woman to take that title off of Shayna Baszler is Io Shirai. I believe that is the next NXT Women's Champion. And then, then, after that, it should be Bianca Belair. I, wanna, I want him to do something with Candice LeRae as well. We haven't seen Candice LeRae in a couple months. I don't know where uh, I don't know where she's been, but um, I want to see more Candice LeRae. But as far as the women's championship match goes, I'm going with Shayna. Then we got the main event. We got Alistair Black and Tommaso Ciampa. If their first match taught you anything, it's that these two are going to put on an absolute classic. I guarantee you, if that match was in front of a NXT TakeOver crowd, I think that that match right there would have been in the top 10 for best matches of the year. Tommaso Ciampa becoming NXT champion against Aleister Black, that was a moment edged in NXT history. And I think that we are going to see another historic moment at TakeOver Phoenix as well. I think this match could very well, if they get, they're, they're going to give these guys 30 minutes and we're going to get a fucking five-star classic out of these guys. I'm calling it right now. These guys are putting on a fucking five-star classic, and we are going to be bowing down to these guys like, like, uh, like we're like we're fucking slaves at King's Feet. These guys, if history serves us correctly, these guys are going to absolutely tear the house down. This match right here is going to be, and then, you know, the road, the road to WrestleMania hasn't even started yet, and I guarantee you that this match right here, this match is going to be better than nearly every match on WrestleMania's card. And the reason why I'm saying WrestleMania's card is because Royal Rumble actually has a pretty good card and could produce some great damn matches. Finn Balor, Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan Styles, Rusev Nakamura, the Cruiserweight Fatal 4-Way, Ronda and Sasha, Becky and Asuka. And as far as the winner goes, there's no doubt in my mind that Tommaso Ciampa is winning. No doubt in my mind that the sadistic Blackheart 
is going to retain Goldie. You, can, you can't take Goldie away from Champa. Like, it's like his bread and butter. They go to get like tacos and Tuesdays. That championship is meant for Gargano. Some way, somehow, Gargano is going to win the NXT championship. I don't know when. I don't know how. But it's coming. Aleister Black is moving on to bigger and better things. He's either coming up after the Rumble or after WrestleMania. And I don't know what brand they're going to put Aleister Black on. I would put him on Monday Night Raw because Monday Night Raw's roster is depleted as shit. Depleted as shit. They need someone like Aleister Black on Monday Night Raw. I know it's a scary thought, but, you know, what, you know, what else is there? I mean, like, you can't put him on SmackDown. SmackDown's already overflowing with talent. I already named all the talent that's on SmackDown. Samoa Joe, Mustafa Ali, Rey Mysterio, Daniel Bryan, Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, Rusev, Andrade. You're overloading SmackDown Live. You can't, oh, you know, Monday Night Raw is barely loaded. Aleister Black needs to go needs to go to Monday Night Raw whenever he gets called up. Champa's retaining the title. We're gonna get a five star classic. Mark my words. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of the Rundown. As we just surpassed twenty one minutes, I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Do me a couple of favors. I want you to hit that thumbs up. I'm trying to move up in the world. Let's try and get this video to ten thumbs up. Give me that perfect ten thumbs up. If you're gonna give me a thumbs down, well, there you go. Happy Royal Rumble weekend. I also want you to give me a comment down below. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me your predictions for WWE NXT TakeOver Phoenix as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I also want you to follow me on Instagram at the DJ Storms. Follow me on Twitter at Storms Takeover. I want you to go and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. We are 12 subscribers away from 200 subscribers. I'm moving up and up and up and up in the world. I want you to get me to 200 subscribers. The DJ Storms posse is continuing to grow. I also want you to hit that notifications bell with a huge elbow strike. A huge, a nice, nice elbow strike. A nice Brock Lesnar-like elbow strike to bust that bell open. Make it the Liberty notifications bell. That way you can know whenever I pop up on YouTube because when I pop up on YouTube, it's the best time to be on YouTube. Also, this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I am bringing back the Storm Stream again, the 10th annual special edition Storm Stream with my girl JoJo from California. We are going to be making history. We're talking a lot of good topics. We're talking Royal Rumble. We talk in the weekly shows. It's going to be good. Watch me make history this Friday on the 10th Storm Stream. We're also doing Royal Rumble Rundown. That's going to be on Saturday evening. I believe I should be able to get that up by 8. I'm working till 6. I will get it up no matter what, guys. Otherwise, now I got to go. Uh, I got to go do some college work or else I'm going to be uh, failing that. I'm going to be failing college. I can't fail college or else, you know, I'm going to have to fall back on this. I mean, not that I don't love this, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Anyway, I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go get some college work done, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the one and only DJ Storms, and this has been the rundown. Catch you guys later.